I'm going to talk about power and authority. There is a difference. Max Weber, one of the great sociologists of modern times, says that power carries with it the ability to coerce. Coercion always is in the background when we talk about power. For instance, when the uh, policeman in the patrol car pulls up behind me on the highway with the red lights flashing, I pull over. I don't want to obey him. I don't want to yield to his request that I pull over, but I do because I have to. Uh, he's got power. It's called a gun. And I yield to him because he's got power. He doesn't have to pull the gun. He doesn't have to use the gun. The very fact that coercion is the possibility makes me obedient. Authority is quite different. My mother had great authority over me. No power. She was a little Italian lady. I could have kicked her down the steps. But when she spoke, I obeyed because she had authority. And where did she get that authority? She got that authority by thousands and thousands of loving, sacrificial things she did for me over the years. Her sacrifices, her loving sacrifices, uh, earned her authority. There's a big difference between power and authority. And what I want to say is this, that when the church tries to play power games, uh, when the church tries to use, for instance, political power to impose its will on people, it loses even when it thinks it wins. The church has a need to speak with authority. Now, a good example of what I mean by authority is in the story of Mother Teresa. There's a, uh, a city uh, not too far from Eastern University where they have a state hospital. And uh, in the state hospital, uh, they have people who are emotionally and psychologically disturbed. And it's, it's a huge place. Well, the directors of the hospital wanted to start these halfway houses so that people who were on their way to full recovery could be nurtured from the hospital back into society by first going to these halfway houses, and from there they could get jobs and little by little take on their own residences. It, it was a transition stage, and, and that's what they wanted, these five halfway houses. Well, needless to say, the people in the city were not particularly thrilled with this post possibility of this prospect. And there was a city council meeting. The place was packed out. 500 people plus squeezed into this hall, yelling and screaming their opposition to the halfway houses. They didn't want the quote unquote crazies living in their neighborhood. Needless to say, the, the uh, city council voted unanimously against the proposal. Uh, not much discussion. A lot of yelling, a lot of screaming, and the city council said no to the proposition. No sooner had they voted than the back doors of the auditorium were opened and in came Mother Teresa. She was in town for a, a ceremony to dedicate a Sister of Charity program and, and she heard about this meeting. She came down the center aisle and everybody gasped as Mother Teresa came to the front, got down on her knees in front of the city council, raised her arms and said, in the name of Jesus, Make room for these, these children of God. When you reject them, you reject Jesus. When you affirm them, you embrace Jesus. And then with her arms upraised, five times in a row she said, please, 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 in the name of God, make room for these people. Make room for them in your neighborhoods. Now you're on the city council. The... Uh, the television stations have followed Mother Teresa into the place and they're grinding away. The newspaper reporters are there. There's Mother Teresa on her knees in front of you. What are you going to do if you're on the city council? You guessed it. I move we change uh, the decision and, and, and second to the motion, they voted unanimously to reverse the decision they had made just a few minutes earlier. The newspapers reporting on this the next day said the most remarkable thing is of the 500 plus people packed into that hall, not a one of them uttered a word of opposition to the motion. Why? Because of Mother Teresa. She spoke as one having authority. And where did she get that authority? On the streets of Calcutta, lovingly sacrificing for the poor and the oppressed of the world, giving of herself to meet the needs of others sacrificially 
Sacrificial love earned her authority. Whenever the church speaks with authority, people listen. But the church has to be sacrificial. And I'm afraid that the church has not been sacrificial enough. In these days of an economic downturn, uh, there's a tendency of the church to say, well, we've got to keep our own building intact. We've got to take care of our own staff. We have our own needs. And I'm telling you that the church that forgets itself and sacrifices for the needs of the poor and the oppressed, not only in their own neighborhood but around the world, that's the church that will speak with authority. The church that speaks with authority doesn't have to resort to power. People will listen. Jesus resorted to authority. They said in Scripture, he speaks as one having authority. Uh, it says that he emptied himself of power in the second chapter of Philippians, took upon himself the form of a servant. The word is actually doulos, which means slave in the original Greek, and, and made himself of no reputation. And here it is, he humbled himself even unto death, even unto the death of the cross. But listen to me, it doesn't end there. The passage of Scripture from the second chapter of Philippians goes on to say, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But we Christians know that his lordship was not built on power, but on a cross. His sacrificial act of love earns him the name that is above every name. You know, this is true in the family as well. I hear uh, mothers and fathers say to me, my, my son, my, my daughter doesn't listen to me anymore. When I talk about God, when I talk about scriptures, they roll their eyes and say, do we have to listen to this? And they just don't listen. And I say, it's because you don't have authority. You say, what do you mean I don't have authority? Well, the kid sees you spend $150 for a ticket to go to a football game and throw $5 into the offering plate for the poor. And when you talk about God, that kid knows it isn't serious. After all, you would have sacrificed in love if it was serious. The church, the family, you as an individual need to imitate Jesus, who constantly turned away from power, constantly did the temptation experience. Turn the stones into bread, said Satan. Economic power. Jesus said no. Go and jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Show them a miracle down there at the, at the temple. Religious power. Jesus said no. To the top of the mountain and show them all the kingdoms of the world. Political power. Jesus said no. I don't want political power. I don't want economic power. I don't want religious power. I want to change the world by lovingly sacrificing for the poor and the oppressed. Because the more I sacrifice in love, the more authority I will have. In today's world, we need a church. We need families. We need persons who are ready to sacrifice to meet the needs of others. That's what changes the world. Martin Luther King didn't have po political power, but he changed America. Mahatma Gandhi didn't have political power. He never commanded an army. He changed the nation. I tell you that they understood Jesus better than most church people do, they understood that the way to change the world is not to impose your will on others, but to lovingly sacrifice and earn the authorities that when you speak, they will listen. They said of Jesus, he's not like the religious leaders, he's not like Herod, he's not like Pilate. When this man speaks, he speaks with authority. Would to God we learn from Jesus. Mm -hmm.